screen recording of the oops, my little bites. Um, big ideas from chapter 25. I put these notes up on my website last week, but again, we've got time and I want to make sure I do some of the things that I would otherwise do. So big ideas with electric charges and forces for chapter 25, like charges repel, opposite charges attract. So insulators, things like plastic, dry wood, rubber, are things where charges are immobile, and conductors are things like metals, um, and most water, as long as it's not distilled, um, which allow charges to flow, th flow freely. So the positive and negatives were ar determined arbitrarily, and I think that's by Ben Franklin. Um, he thought that, po or he and other scientists thought that positives move, um, and that's why when we talk about conventional current, that's the way it initially started. Before people found out the negatives are caused by electrons, which are on the outside of atoms. So most conductors um, that are solids, which is what we deal with in this class, uh, we find that <clears throat> um, electrons move. So negative moving here and there as opposed to positives. If you become positive, that's because of a loss of negatives. So the nucleus is about 10 to the negative 14th meters across. An electron cloud is about 10 to the negative 10th meters across. So that means that an electron is about 10 to the negative 10th meters away from the nucleus or any protons in the atom. So Coulomb is the standard unit of charge, but an electron or a proton each are considered having a fundamental unit of charge which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. That means that 6.25 times 10 to the 18th charges equal 1 coulomb. <coughs> uh, you probably want to know the mass of a proton and electron. Those are on your formula sheet. Proton about 2,000 times more massive than an electron. So charge is symbolized by the letter capital Q or lower Q depending on the situation. Um, just talked about the negative charges there. When charges move or transfer on conductors, this happens in essentially no time. It's instantaneous, basically. Not exactly, but basically. And then they reach instant or, uh, electrostatic equilibrium. That means where there is no net force caused by the position of those charges. In an isolated conductor, any excess charge is on the outside. Well, why? They repel each other. Now, if it's a nice uniform shape like a sphere, they're evenly spaced. If it's not a nice uniform shape, if it's like pear-shaped or avocado-shaped, what you'll notice is the charges tend to accumulate at the points of the um, conductors. And that's because there, most of their electric forces on each other are pointing outward because their electric field lines are pointing out perpendicular from the surface. Polarization is when you have a slight separation of the positive and negative charges in a neutral object. So if something positive is brought close by, and this is a neutral object, the negatives would be attracted, the positives would be repelled. Since the negatives are closer to these positives than the positives are, the net attractive force is greater than the repulsive force. A dipole is when this occurs with atoms and, and molecules on a small scale. So there's a great figure, 25.13 on page 730. Um, This book, your textbook, talks about dipoles way too much. I don't know if that was the area of research for the guy who wrote it or not, but I think they are way, way over, um, way over <laughs> so much on dipoles and how they work. I think they'll talk a little bit about dipole moment, um, but other than that, basically you just know their separation of charges on a molecular scale. Charging by induction can happen this way. So if we bring a test charge, and test charges are normally thought of as a small positive charge, but could be positive or negative, I suppose, like a charged rod close to something, and this is an electroscope. Um, I'm going to try to record some demos at school and upload that video. So if you've got a positive rod nearby, negatives come up to the top, therefore leaving the bottom with a net positive charge. If this is neutral initially, however many positives are up here should initially be the same as, or negatives up here are the same as the number of positives down here. However, if someone touches this and has a path somewhere else, these negatives then can move on to the person, leaving this with a net positive charge. 
So Oh, I lied. I have a net negative charge because the positives tend to go away. I even drew that in a picture. So if I touch this on the positive side, not on the far away side. Sorry about that. Coulomb's Law. This is the big mathematical relationship. Chapter 25, it works vectorally. <clears throat> so just like anything else where you have a force, you need to be interactive forces. So the force on one thing is equal to the force of that thing back on the original object. So interactive force pairs still apply. The other thing is a net force can be caused by multiple charge interactions. There you just have to solve it vectorally. So one of the homework problems, I think 37, does something like that, where you have things in a box shape. That's actually pretty common for AP to do something like that. And what we'll need to do is figure out both the force in a situation like that um, and the electric field caused by situations like that. And finally, the electric potential caused by situations like that. We'll do that in the next few weeks. Um, in the past, we've talked about those interactive forces, but really when we talk about interactive forces caused by objects, we're really talking about fields. So in the next few chapters, we're going to have a lot of analogies between gravitational forces and fields and electrical forces and fields. Because most people are pretty comfortable with gravitational forces and fields. They can't see or feel electrical forces normally on a small scale. So we can use an analogy to help out. <clears throat> So fields are caused by a source, they permeate all of space, and they act on objects that also produce the same kind of field. So for example, gravitational field is created by a mass, it acts on other masses. So the universal law of gravitation is K or a big G mass 1 times mass 2 over distance squared. That's an interaction between two masses because they each cause a gravitational field. Here, an electrical field is caused by a net charge. And you should know that objects which don't show any charges aren't absent of charges, just they're neutral. They have the same number of positives and negatives, which are usually trillions and trillions. So a net charge would cause an electric field. Um, it acts on other charges, which also would have their own electric field. Fields are vector quantities. So here's a comparison. Electric field is a ratio of force to charge. Newtons per coulomb. Gravitational field is a ratio of force to mass. Newtons per kilogram. Newtons per kilogram also works out to meters per second squared. Number four, and this will be coming up in, um, more in the next chapter, if the general formula for electric field is force over charge, it's a force per charge ratio, and the force between two point charges re is related by Coulomb's law, so we can determine how two point charges or how a single point charge would cause an electric field. So if we substitute this, which is the purple, actually it should be everything except the bottom Q um, here, we see that this force over charge would equal K, Q1, Q2 over Q times R squared. The bottom Q comes from this electric field formula. Well, basically what ends up happening is the charge that's at a distance away cancels out, and so the electric field at a point in space is caused by the charge of the point charge times the electrical or Coulomb's law constant, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th, divided by the distance squared. And by the way, your textbook shows this as being 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub 0. We'll talk about that. There's times where we want to use four pi, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub 0, or epsilon sub 0 itself, which is called the vacuum permittivity constant. But in this chapter, we want to use k, which is 9 times 10 to the positive 9th. So how do we represent fields? With arrows and lines. So comparing gravitational fields and electric fields is in the next chapter. However, you do need to understand that by definition, electric field lines point from positive to negative. So this is an example of a uniform electric field. And this is an example of a point source creating an electric field. Here, it's pretty obvious that the field strength stays the same. Here it's pretty obvious that the field strength gets weaker and weaker the further you get from your test charge. Hopefully that makes sense and I'll upload it.